Hello and welcome to Safeguarding the Gungu. In this program we're going to take a look at the cultural significance of sea turtle and how our traditional owners manage sea country in the Burdekin Dry Tropics region. First up is Juru Elder David Smord talking about turtle monitoring in Bowen. Yeah, well, first off I'd like to say what a mully to all our, uh, our viewers that may be out there. Uh, the purpose of this um, exercise here was to share our knowledge with our Gurigan uh, uh, clan brothers and sisters up in uh, Ingham area and Cardwell area. Uh, they've come down to see how the uh, monitoring is done for tagging the turtles. We've been doing this since about 2003 and to date we've tagged nearly 700 turtles in the bay. So it started off, um, we wanted to work with the traditional owners to find out what sustainable hunting quotas would be for the area because traditional owners, they still want to harvest some turtles and dugong and they want to be able to do it in a way that is going to be sustainable. So we've got a, a, a bunch of young um, people from both the Girrigan and the Gujarat um, communities and um, these are the future decision make makers. So what we're trying to do here is show them how we monitor turtle populations in a Western science way so that they get the understanding how we do it and hopefully they will take it back and get an understanding of what the population is doing, whether it's increasing, decreasing, or whether it's stable. And then they're able to make decisions about whether they choose to harvest turtles here or whether they want to not harvest as many or set numbers of, of how many they'd like to take. So it's just like a, a farmer um, looking or managing cattle in a, in a paddock. Now, he or she knows that they can take some of those cows out and there can still be lots of, of cattle left. But if they take too many, there's not going to be enough to reproduce. So it's those sorts of processes that we use, and it's exactly the same we're using here with turtles. So we're actually putting um, tags in turtles, and then we let them go, and then we might catch them next year, and then we um, can read those tags, and we know how much they've grown. And we can, it'll also, we use mathematics to work out what the total population here is here, and whether it is increasing or decreasing, or whether it's stable. We had a young fellow with us, it was the first, first time, and he dived in and got his first turtle. And he was that proud and happy. We've been just catching turtles and tagging them and stuff. I came with my dad and my brother and sister and other Gurian elders. When I caught my first turtle, I was very excited. And yeah, it was fun. The elders, they, they told all the, the, us young indigenous that, that we had a project down here doing the turtle tagging. They told us to um, protect and preserve and monitor the turtles so we can at least um, track them in the waters where they are and how much is there. It's good to have these young kids here. The knowledge that uh, the elders will give and share to the young fellas, it's very good. It's something that they'll relate back now to a lot of the younger people in the areas where they come from and also with the knowledge of this video that they'll be able to see that there are young people involved in this, not just the elders of that area going out. So it's the young ones that we need to uh, be the actual role models uh, for this whole exercise. The Aboriginal people from this area, we've uh, always um, protected and maintained the um, turtle population in Bowen and in the Burdigan, which is our traditional area. and uh, by Tagging these turtles, we'll have a close number on how many will be out there for future generations, hopefully. As it was um, passed on to me, my role here was to look after the turtle and the marine environment, our sites, from my elders. And now that it's been handed on to me, well, the younger people now, we've got to hand it to them. Phil Riss is the traditional owner of the Nawagi clan and the boss of the Girigan Aboriginal Corporation. He talks to us about the importance of looking after sea turtle populations. The, the survival of the turtle in Dugong is critical to us and there are a lot of threats to that at the moment. As far as our take of uh, turtle in Dugong goes, um, it's seen by the broader community as another threat to the, to the sustainability of those animals. And we're, we're very um, uh, concerned about the threat to, the, to these animals, so we are going to take steps ourselves to manage our take 
in use of these animals, you know. The loss of those animals, from our point of view, would be catastrophic. We have to be seen to be very proactive about how we manage them, you know, and, uh, because I suppose at the end of the day, it's, it's us who will lose the most. We're at Malongo Creek, Cape Upstart Bay. I'm joining the Goodyear to Reference Group, who's going to come out and show us how they do their traditional hunting practices for sea turtle. So come on, let's go and see what they're up to. Ever since I was um, a young fella, it's always been you know, part of our culture and very significant for us to be involved with turtles. I was always going out with my uncles and my dad you know, to learn um, how to hunt turtles. One of the main um, reasons that were instilled in us was about you know, making sure that we didn't take more than what we actually needed. Some of the main purposes that we used to go turtle hunting for and still do is for ceremonial practices, mostly involving if there's funerals or for special occasions such as 21sts or weddings. We've you know, tried to make it so that um, we do make sure that our population of turtles are you know, kept in place. I feel very strong towards um, being able to keep up this culture and making sure that with my kids, when my sons or my nephews and that, that they're going to be brought up, making sure that they know how to, you know, tr um, traditional hunting. Goodyear does have a few um, agreements in place with um, government agencies. One of our main ones that we um, try and practice here is our sea turtle permits. What this permit system does is make sure that while we are out hunting, that we don't um, you know, go excessive um, and take too many turtles. The areas of traditional owners hunting are managed by the Queensland Department of Environment and Resource Management. The federal government organisation is the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. Here's Mark Reed to tell us a bit about it. We're a government body and we're entrusted to look after the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park, which is approximately 345,000 square kilometres of country that extends from north of Bundaberg all the way to the tip of Cape York Peninsula. We look after the things in the ocean, such as coral reef and fish and those sorts of things. We look after turtles, whales, dugongs, islands and seabirds. Within the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park, we're lucky enough to have six species of marine turtles that are recorded, but probably the, the one that's most important for traditional people of, of Queensland is the green turtle. Compared to the rest of the world, we've got a great population. We've got two long-lived species, the dugongs estimated to live somewhere around 70 years old, the green turtles potentially the same age. So what we've got is an animal that needs looking after across multiple generations of people. It's not just my responsibility, it's not just the next generations, it's actually future generations as well. If we do that, I'm really hoping that my children and uh, the other children and future generations will have the, the, the joy the benefit of seeing turtles and dugong in the wild.